Hey everybody, I'm Craig Belleen, Marketing Performance Strategist, Enhanced Marketing Performance. Welcome to this uh, surprise guest presentation. Uh, today, our guest is uh, Adam Libman, a good friend of mine, a long-term member of Enhanced Marketing Performance, EMP. And Adam is what some would call a financial genius, uh, but he is, uh, in theory, a tax reduction specialist and fractional CFO. And today we're going to talk a little bit about CFO metrics for sales and marketing success. Adam, welcome. Thanks for being here today. No, thank you. So, Adam, why don't you walk us through and tell us what this is all about? Yeah, so what I'd like to do is talk about sales and marketing, not from a gross revenue point of view, but uh, as a CFO looks at it in terms of profitability, as in which clients make us money, which advertising makes us money, um, which sources of advertising work. Because what I find is that a lot of people spend a lot of time, effort, and money trying to get sales. And they do a very poor job of seeing if any of it is actual profitable work. Um, and what I find is a lot of companies actually just burn. Uh, what's your phrase, Craig, where you talk about burning your, your house down with a bigger candle? <laughs> yeah, it's like getting a bigger, bigger mousetrap to catch the mice. You know, it's the same thing. Yeah, you know, shitty clients are shitty clients. You know, um, bad work is bad work. And what I find is that, you know, most people just do not look at the numbers Additionally, what I find is that most business, and this is critical, is especially for us, Craig, because a lot of us, we deal with a lot of clients who are both the owner and operator of their business. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is they're acquiring clients and not accounting for certain of their own cost of fulfillment of the service. And so once you take that into account, that cost factor, most clients that people are bringing in are actually losing them more and more money. And like a, you cannot scale negative. Right. That's a good, <laughs> that's a writer downer. Writer downer. Can't scale zero. Yeah. So I got a, a presentation for us. Um, feel free to ask questions. Sure. Um, so let's head on over to this. So for some of you out there that are kind of first timers out there, when we're referring to sales and marketing, really what we're talking about is client acquisition because nobody really wants to do marketing. They want new clients and customers. And really what people want are new dollars, new dollars from new wallets. So this is kind of the fundamental shift. We're kind of going from this ethereal, we want to get marketing to, no, we want to get clients who pay us money. Um, so when it comes to client acquisition, the first thing to kind of think about, Craig, and I know, we talk about all this all the time, is that what does it cost to buy a new client? And this is kind of a, a mind shift for some of you out there, is that what does it cost to buy a new client, right? What does it cost, right? And what you'll find is that when we try to buy clients, usually we buy clients from different places. So in this particular uh, thing, we've got uh, word of mouth, we've got online. So where are we buying our clients? And what I find is that depending on the lead source, the client acquisition costs will be very different. So for example, Craig, if you refer me a client versus me going on Yelp versus me going on Craigslist or me going on Google AdWords, the cost will vary substantially. So what we right. need to do is, is calculate it by, by channel. You know, if I may, on that last one, you know, there are some successful companies that rely on uh, networking, quote unquote, or the chambers of commerce, and they go to those events and they pay a dues to belong to them. So let's say it's $250 a year and they pay for the lunch to go to that or the breakfast that they attended back when we could do those things. And then when they acquire uh, a new customer, someone, you know, so would you say that you would calculate all the money that you've paid thus far up until that first time you get a client? Mm, good question. Thank you for asking. Yeah, yeah. When it comes, go ahead. When it comes to individuals who are generating their own leads, so like for you and I, we're hustling. We're going to, oh, what's that thing? BNI early in the morning at Mimi's, right? Mm -hmm. You need to account for your own cost of time in there. So a lot of people be like, oh yeah, I've been networking, and they give you a zero cost. The problem with it is how do you scale that? How do you hire new sales and marketing people? You cannot do that. Um, every time you spend away from 
your business networking, you could have been generating revenue. So what I always tell everybody is when you're doing that type of networking is you need to account for cost at your highest billable rate per hour. So if it takes you three hours to drive back and forth to that BNI, you need to charge at your highest billable rate uh, yeah. for that time as a cost. Right. Wow. Because once you do that, you're like, oh my God, because a lot of people, so I'll give you an example. In my accounting world, the average acquisition cost for me is anywhere between, it's probably like around $700. And I got friends of mine who were like, dude, mine is zero because I'm just hustling. I'm like, well, how many hours did it take? Yeah. Is your time free? It's like, yeah, no. Right. The next thing that we want to do is that's really important is you want to calculate your acquisition costs by client type. So, so Craig, you and I, we've got good clients and bad clients. We've got clients we like that cannot pay and we've got people that pay us and we don't like them. And ideally you want to have clients that we both like and pay a lot of money. So it's important to categorize um, clients by what I call type. Are they a whale? Are they nice to work with? Do they just pay their bills? Um, you know, there's a, there's a term that I use when I inject, I inject a slight fee for those people that, for those that pay me that I don't like, and that's called the PETA fee, P-I-T-A, pain in the ass fee. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because what I find is that, um, yeah, it's important to practice for sure. <laughs> and, then, and then and this kind of follows up with that last thing you're mentioning. And this is like this idea of nothing is free. Um, for those of you who are small business owners who are hustling, you have to charge an account for your time at your highest billable rate. And that's what I find is that most people make is a serious mistake. Uh, and it, and it, it, that's why they cannot scale and grow. Yeah. Most people are limited by this factor alone. Yeah. Um, so here's another core concept, which is called lifetime customer value. And, and the simple answer on this one, a simple question or simple answer, is how much will a person pay you over their entire life? Um, so Craig, like some of your clients have been with you for 13 years. years. 13 some years. Of them maybe just show up for an, an evening and they're negative. So the people that show up just for, you know, the free drinks and food, okay, they're negative $30, right. you know, and then you have other clients that literally have probably paid you a hundred thousand dollars over the course of, of a time. So we want to calculate lifetime customer value. This will be important in a moment. Um, and kind of visually, the re so I, I got this Mercedes Benz. So a lot of these like name brands, the reason why they create a relationship with you is they feel that they'll sell you a lot of stuff over time. So I do find that relationship businesses tend to care about lifetime value. Um, so it's worth thinking about that a lot. Um, there's also lifetime customer value by channel. Um, so this is twins for some of you who are kind of not as old. This is a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Danny DeVito, where they're, they came from the same mother and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is perfect, and Dan Navito is just this kind of runt. Um, and what this is to say is that, I'll give you an example. If a client is referred to me by you, Craig, they might stick with me as a client for five years. I can tell you with Yelp, the average person stays about two. Mm, yep. So the lifetime customer value is very different. You know, I will skip this one for now. So I want to show you an Excel example of what this looks like in terms of math really quick. So Craig, can you see this right now? I can. So what we have here is channel. So we've got Yelp, Google PPC, Mastermind. By the, oh, for bonus trick for all of you folks out there watching this video, Mastermind's dollar for dollar are the best way to get long-term high value clients. Join yeah. as many Masterminds as you can, or you have to meet people. Anyway, that's, by the way, Craig, I got another client of mine where that's how he's grown into a $5 million business. He's a yeah. part of five masterminds. All he does is go to his masterminds. Well, and again, if you'll notice, you know, I mean, I've been, my, I've had two masterminds over the last 13 years and almost every one of my high paying clients, longest clients have come from the mastermind. Yeah. So that's a, that's a secret for all of you kids out there. Yeah. So anyway, trade show referrals. So this is what I call ad spend. So this column is ad spend. This is clients acquired. And then this is client acquisition costs. So the formula here is simply ad spend divided by clients acquired. Client acquisition costs. So it costs $4,000. Mm -hmm. 
The next thing that you go, you always need to do is your first year average sales for the client. So, so Craig, you asked something earlier, maybe when we were talking before, it was like, well, how do you account for that ratio? Oh, we'll talk about the ratios later. But I always say, what is your first gross, what, your first 12 months worth of business with this person? Right. And so what happens is we get, so and you keep track of this. So then the next thing is 40. So now we've got your sales revenue per channel. And so what we do is we take average first year sales right? And then um, times the clients acquired. And that gives us 40,000. Mm. In this case, it's 8,000 for Google PPC. In this particular one, the first for mastermind, the first year is 108,000. And then um, the next one is referrals. Nice. So Craig, now obviously you and your group are very focused on this top line right here. Right. And I think it's critical. It's critical. Um, it's absolutely well, critical. Yeah, I'm a big proponent for advertising, but again, it's the right channel. It's like, we're, you know, your Yelp people typically are looking for, you know, probably the best deal for the most reviews, right? The, they want the best well-known or the best liked Per expert for the cheapest price. Yeah. In, in in my case, you know, or if I if I were advertising, for instance, for for new members or lead magnet or something to that effect, um, you know, I really have to be very careful. I'm not looking for cheap people, <laughs> and nor you, huh? But but you know, you go where the highest quality leads come from. Yep. And then the next one over here, which is critical. So this is sales to ad spend. Mm -hmm. so, uh, um, um, so we got the ad spend and then we got this and then we come up with the minus sign. So what this means is are we making money or losing money just on the top line? So this would be like, this would be like gross, gross sales. So this right. is like a cost of goods sold situation where we take your sales minus ad spend. And what you'll see is some of these are positive, some of these are negative. These by themselves are meaningless, but it's important to keep track. Mm -hmm. So now over here, what I've done is a ratio. Sales to ad spend. Now I'll tell you, just as a general for you people listening out there, is for what I have found is at a minimum for every dollar of ad spend, you must get at least $2 of gross revenue. Otherwise you're in trouble. So for every dollar of ad spend, so let me just be super clear. Let's say you hire Craig. So you've got to take account Craig's cost, the ad spend cost, the media cost, the website cost, all of that stuff becomes ad spend cost. Right. And then you come up with what you see, what the labor is, but I pull it all together. So the consulting fees, Craig, I put it all in, in, in here together as one, one lumping. Yeah, most people just account for the actual cost of the advertisement. They're not accounting for all the other things. No, but you got to do the website. Uh, like you're not free, Craig. Like you're charging, no. you know, you're charging a fair price for what you offer. So you have to add it all in there. Right. Um, the next thing is if you're doing for every dollar of media spend and you can get $3, that is the minimum amount for you to grow and start scaling. Right. And then once you get beyond that, we were talking earlier about this one to four. If you can do one to four, you can have explosive growth. Yeah. That's when you can actually become an, a regional to national leader. That's, that's it, it's possible, but it's strategic. It just depends on the type of product that you're selling, the product or service you're selling. It's easy to do it on one-offs, but on a gross scale do, that's tough. But it's possible. So here's the next one. And this is this lifetime customer value. So this is what is, what are you going to bring in over time? So, so for example, in this first one on Yelp, what are those gross sales over a lifetime? Mm. And so we do that over here. Now, the reason is, is because there's a cost to everything and there's lifetime customer value. You might start off negative, but you could end up positive over time. This next thing is probably the most important thing that I want to share with everybody here. 
And this is why most people fail and they go broke when it comes to marketing and trying to grow their business Mm -hmm. is because most people do not account for labor and overhead costs when assessing media Mm -hmm. and its profitability. And, And I'll explain this. Once you get, and I, this is how I experienced this, and I didn't even know this because I was stupid and I was so naive and just inexperienced, but I started advertising on Yelp and I started getting clients and then I got busy. Hmm. And then I'm like, oh shit, I need to hire people. So I had to hire staff and then I had to get a bigger office. <laughs> and then my communication system wasn't, we weren't, the, the technology wasn't there to have multiple staff members communicating. And then we needed to redefine our processes. And then you need an operations manager. So like everybody starts off thinking, oh, I'll get more clients. Like this is what what Dan Kennedy would say. It's not a marketing problem anymore. Right. (laughs) Remember that? Yep. (laughs) It's not a marketing problem. It happens all too often. But what happens is, is that if you're an owner operator, you need to account for the labor and overhead cost at all times, because ultimately what we want to assess is your profitability on year one and then year two. So for a lot of these, what you'll notice is you're actually going to go negative on most channels the first year when you account for labor and overhead. Mm -hmm. This is critical. So what does that mean? Is that you have to do a good enough service to get into the second and third year. Yeah. So if this was a dating analogy, you're not getting laid on the first or second date, guys. <laughs> right. If you're going to make that investment, because a lot of times, like Craig, you and I, we've been in business long enough. We make mistakes. We screw up. We hurt people's feelings. We underperform. Right. Um, I hate to admit this, but I, I do. Um, and what I'm saying is that what the math is telling us is that on average, you will be negative your first year out the door on almost any client. Mm -hmm. So that means if you're not doing a good enough service, you're better off not even advertising. Right. Isn't that scary, Craig? Yeah. Yeah. That is, you know, a lot of people, again, this information should be taught you know, again, it's probably taught in the MBA program, right? It's not taught. It's not taught to most business owners. It's you know, um, you know, one of the uh, things that I here's here's I got a comment from somebody. It's like I'm paying you enough. You're getting paid more than enough to do what I do. But again, if we count the the overhead, then I'm ta- I'm making negative, and that's never considered. So. I mean, I, it's taken me a long time to charge what I'm worth. And some people do work for, for free. I do work for a friend of ours for nearly free now, you know, because he's in transition. I but, know. And what I found, Craig, and this is me talking just from my experience, is you wind up hurting the person by undercharging because yeah. you wind up underserving yourself. You yeah. underserve them. And I no longer do discounts or do things. I tell people, I'm like, I would be doing you a disservice to give you a discount. Yeah. And now I believe it. So, so before, like, it was like one of those cute little, you know, fake until you make it. And now it's like, no, now I can say the people who I charge less to, guess what? They get less service and guess yeah. what? They're still the same pain in the ass as everybody else. You know, if I may, we just had, I don't know if you saw, we had a tree fall on our house. A month oh, yeah, ago. I did. Yeah. yeah. And, and the contractor came out today, uh, a referred contractor. And he goes, I'm not, he goes, look, we're, we may or may not take this on because it's too little for us. We charge, we go for $150,000 jobs and things like that. And he was almost talking himself into doing the smaller job. He goes, no, 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 this is not our work. We do. So he knows the level of which he's willing to accept this right now. It's about a third of that. Right. So it's, you know, it's being clear that, you know, if again, to make the numbers work, you know, especially in a big company like his, uh, they have employees, they've got equipment, they've got insurance, they've got a building costs, they've got maintenance costs, they've got all these other things that they got to consider and $150,000 worth of work probably barely produces profit for them. Yep. And I see it every day. And this is, and this is what I wanted to point out in this one. In this particular thing, the first year was negative, but the first year was positive 13,000. This one was negative 32, but the next year it was 2,000. This one was a real winner. This negative 44,000 and the next year's 36,000. Oh, this is important. 
So what happens between year one and two, Craig? Why are these numbers different is probably what you should ask me. <laughs> why, are those, why are those numbers different? Because in year two, we no longer have acquisition cost. We now just have labor and overhead. Right. And, and overhead. The rest is owner's profit. Right. Very good. And so um, and that's what I want to say. The reason why you always go negative is once you do ad spend, um, overhead labor, you're always negative. But in the second year, you no longer have acquisition cost. What right. I really wanted to point out here is that it's possible to go really negative in year one, but in year two, have a killer year. So which means two things. You need to have enough cash flow to absorb the, the negative loss. Right. So you have to be, um, you need to be capitalized. And number two is you have to get to year two and three. Mm. If do not, if you are in the game to do marketing and want to grow your business, you cannot think of this quarter, the first quarter and second and third quarter. You need to start thinking, how do I make sure to keep this client to year three, four, and five? Right. Because if you cannot, even year two is not good enough. You will lose money. Yep. And, and that's an interesting question. So once, and the key thing here, Craig, is we go from this transactional thing to this relationships. Mm, right. And as you and I know, relationships are messy. They're ugly. They're emotional. The other day, Craig, I had a person who's having cash flow problems. And I said, I need to get paid before work is going to start. And then a day later, they, they told me how offended they were. Like, how dare you not trust me? And it was really emotional for them and, and it was emotional for me. And it's like, you're going to have these emotional outbursts with, I want to call it, there was a legit I won't call it outburst, but what I'm saying is that you have to know emotionally what you're getting yourself into. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I know very well. Uh, you know, some of my members, you know, I had 142 members at one point and I'd say there's a core 20 that are good friends that are good friends that have been members and clients and, you know, and I know a lot about them and they know a lot about me and, you know, you go with the good and go with the bad. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just what happens. Yeah. You still have to have a little bit of distance with that, but there's a relationship built. Yes. Know? And so, and you and I, we've talked about this, this idea of accepting clients. Yeah. I think that once you and I, once, so when I start, you know, working with clients, I'm like, dude, you're three and four. Do you want to be invested or around this person for you for four years? Right. And so like, I know like what, when you and I are first talking to, let's say a young kid and they're just starting out business, I'm like you need to accept clients. And they're like, dude, I'll suck anyone off. You know, like, you, you know, it's like, you'll do anything. Right. But once I start showing them the math that it takes year three and four before you're actually making any real money off of a client. Right. Then you got to say real, it's like, oh, this is, it's more, it's a more deliberate process. Do I want to engage in this process? Do I actually really want to do marketing and advertising? Right. Because, and that would be my thing to all of, you know, if you're watching this video it is it's really cool to want to increase your gross revenue. But I think a better thing is, are you committed to like a four year brand new relationship? Do you really want this? Yeah. You have the money and emotion to do this. Right. Um, over here, I've just got the break even times uh, to break even. Um, so sometimes, you know, it's just important to, to keep these uh, in line. Um, and those can change over time if the numbers change, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. Um, so here's some key things that I just want to share with you from, from this Excel. Really, this ratio matters. That ad spend to revenue is so critical, and you must keep track of it. Um, and it, just keep track of it. Right. Um, a lot of this stuff is ratios. Oh, this is so critical, boys and girls on out there in TV land. One number by itself is irrelevant. It's all about the ratio of one number in relationship to the other. Right. And probably the other take home that I really want to just hammer in, Craig, is how many of your people own their like you see people's P and L's, their profit and loss, and they make, let's say a hundred thousand dollars a year. And then they, and then I'll ask how many times have you seen people that it's not a true um, profit and loss 
truth. But how many people don't account for their own labor cost in, in their in their business? Right. Right. That happens all the time. Yeah. And that's why most business owners do not grow and scale because they're negative. When you account for your own time as a labor cost, you are running negative. You cannot scale negative. And most people just don't charge enough. Most people have self-esteem issues and they don't charge enough for their own labor. Right. Um, so true. So true. Um, this is probably, you now this is, so th if you want to talk about competitive advantages, Craig, tracking is the dirty word that nobody likes to do. Nobody likes to be accountable of their own time. Right. So what I would just say that in order to be a successful marketer, you have to track not just, not just your labor costs, but you have to track employee billable hours per employee per client. You know, and are you getting those labor dollars and are you actually getting that gross revenue? Um, you, you have to keep track of, of all these things and you have to assign an, an, over, uh, an overhead rate to each client that's reasonable. Um, and I find, honestly, these are the things that limit most people from going from 100,000 to a million dollar firm. Because what happens is an individual, depending on their ability, can you know, you've seen talented individuals, you can gross between 100,000 to about 450 as a one person band, man, woman, as a consultant, you can gross between 100 to 140, uh, 450,000. It's damn near impossible to do more. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. But once you start expanding, you, you have to start keeping track of all this stuff. And this is what limits people's next level growth is yeah. tracking. Yep. And just to give you another funny thing, Craig, is that most of us, is you and I, we're entrepreneurs. Like, I got a beard. You know, I, I'm my own guy. I don't want to be told what to do. Right. And then all of a sudden, you get to this point in business where you actually have to track every employee's minute. And you have to review it and assign it. And it's just so counterintuitive to who we are as individuals. Um, the obvious answer is to hire an operations manager. But in some ways, in order for you to grow, you have to become what you detest. Right. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's the evolution. Of I know. <laughs> but what I want to end with, this is my $300,000, three through 30,000 foot view, is that if you're going to be doing sales and marketing, is what channel over time is worth paying for? Who makes you money? Who loses you money? Who do you want to do business? And I will tell you as a fact, it is not obvious unless you track it. Amen to that. So, Adam, who, uh, who do you want to uh, give you a call or ask more about this? Who, who would be ideal to call you? This is going to be great for people. So here's a couple of qualifiers. One is you have to have employees. Number one, you have employees. Whether they're good employees, bad employees, shitty employees, you got employees. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is you have to be spending money on, on advertising. Um, mm -hmm. How much money? Um, probably, let's say, around $50,000 would probably be about a minimum. Because otherwise, you know, I'm going to charge you money. And it has to be worth your it has to be worth it for you. But what yeah. I find is the qualifiers are you have a couple of employees and you're spending at least 50000 a year on advertising, whether you're spending with Craig plus ad spend plus a designer, um, whether it's, whether it's um, shows or whether it's digital media or speaking events or books. Right. Yeah. Good. And how should they reach out to you? Um, the best thing to do is just call my office, 626-280-6865. Uh, and um, they'll get uh, an answering service to, for an appointment. And um, we'll do a discovery session. And then the first thing we'll do is a small discovery session, which is 15 minutes. That's free. You, everybody gets a little, you get a little bit free. <laughs> I'll give you a little for free. I'll give you a little for free. That's, I'll give you 15 minutes. Um, but if we do more in depth, then it'll be a discovery call, which is 450. And then after that, uh, then, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do for you in terms yeah. of a proposal. Awesome. 
Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Adam, for this time. This has been enlightening. And, uh, you know, it's things that I think about, but you brought up stuff that I never thought about, you know. So uh, thank you very much. Um, if you're watching this and you think you qualify, if this makes sense for you, if you have employees, if you're spending $50,000 in advertising per year at least, give Adam a call. You know, at least spend 15 minutes with him on the phone and see uh, if you can work together, if it works out, you know, because this is important stuff, especially if you want to scale, especially if you want to be proper. So, mandatory, mandatory. Mandatory, mandatory. All right, Adam, thanks so much for being here. And uh, all right.